So in the process of learning JavaScript variables, we have already seen the first set that is primitive data types. Now in this video, we will be looking out the different reference data types we are having in JavaScript and how we can declare and use them inside the programs. So let's dive into it. Hey coders, this is Neha from WebStack. Welcome to the sixth episode of JavaScript series. So before getting started, if you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and do hit the bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. So reference data types in JavaScript is actually, you can say a very good concept which we use here uh, because unlike primitive data types, we do not like store values inside this reference, but actually we are storing a reference or you can say address of that value inside the memory. So we are going to do a separate video on the difference between primitive and reference. Here I'm just going to tell you what are the different reference data types we are having in our JavaScript. The different data types that you have in reference is objects, then we have arrays and also functions. Now we will be looking all of these three one by one with the help of examples. So let's dive into now, it. Let's look into the first reference data type that is called objects. So what actually is objects? So an object is nothing but a container in which you will store all the related information of an entity. So by entity, I mean any kind of real world object. So you can have a person as an object, then you can have vehicle, you can have orders, employees, organization, department, and so on. So any real world entity is known as object and we store various properties that are related to that I do one container and we call it as objects. So now let's see the example here that is given. Uh, we have created a post here and we have given certain properties inside post. So let's go on to our VS code and write this code down. Now let's see first why we need this object inside JavaScript. So let's say I have a blog uh, that I need to create or I have a blogging website where I need to create one post here. So let's say I want to give the name of the post. So I'll just use a let keyword. You can simply write here const as well. So it doesn't matter unless you are doing actually a real uh, world project because right now we are seeing just how to create this object. So uh, I'm just writing the name of my post. Let's say my first post. And after that, let's put a semicolon here. Let's say there are some more properties of this post. I also want that uh, number of likes or claps given to my post is let's say around 40 and I also want to give some other property to my post let's say author or created by or anything like that so I'll just write here my name that is Neha if I try to print it using console.log you simply need to write name then likes and then author and that's it oops so i need to provide comma here not the dot operator now you can see that my first post 40 likes and neha is getting printed out here but now you can see that all these things are related to actually one blog post. So why not to just wrap all these variables around a single container? Now let's try to put this entire properties, entire details about my post inside one object. So let's try to create an object here. So I'll be writing a constant object because I don't want to change my post. So let's say const posts. Let uh, let's keep it as plural and after that actually the object takes the key and value pairs so we will be writing here key and value pairs which will be actually uh, related to this post so let's check this out so i'll be writing the key as let's say name and inside name i'll write my first post and after that let me write like as well so number of likes let's say it is likes so i'm getting number of likes let's say 50 
and after that you need to provide the author name so it's just optional nothing else so i'll write neha here and that's it so that means that these are the properties of my post and now i want to access this post object so you can access it by two methods so first let us try to print this out and then see how we can access it so now if i try to print this posts variable directly in console.log it is simply giving me an object you can see that different properties are there like author likes and name so as you can see here the property names are also coming in ascending order in this uh, output so nothing to worry about that now let's say if i want to access a particular property and i don't want to print this complete object here so if i want to print any particular property let's say i want to print the name of my post so i will simply use a dot operator so very first thing is you can use a dot operator to access uh, your values inside this object so i'll write posts dot like you do in any other language for objects so i'll simply write name so let's say i want to print the name only so it is now printing me uh, in the console that is my first post so let's try to print a statement here i'll simply say my uh, first post and then i'll simply write here has you need to provide a concatenation operator if you want here like like this and then you need to provide has this many likes inside it oops we need to write here and then i'll just simply write likes so i need to access this likes using the post object so you need to write something like this so i'll just keep it in the next line yes so this is the answer so it is saying my first post has 50 likes now let's see what is the second method by which you can access the property or the key value pair inside this object so the second thing is you can use uh, brackets oops just a typo error so you can use the brackets operator as well so if i write something uh, console.log and then I try to print this posts and I'll just access the element inside it by using the square brackets and inside it I'll be giving the key name. So I have these three keys like author, likes and name. So let's try to print out author here and just put semicolon and you can see that author is getting printed as Neha. Now let's see one more thing inside this object. Now what you can do here is uh, we can always change the properties of this object as well anytime in our program. So if I want to change the properties here, let's say I want to change the author name. So I'll simply write here uh, posts dot then you can write author and then you can always give a new author name. So let's say the new author name is uh, let's say Nick or something and then if I try to print the value it will say author name as the Nick. Next let's reference see. data type that is called arrays. So arrays is basically a variable that stores multiple values of different types uh, in JavaScript. Unlike any other language uh, in which you write the arrays, you can only write a single data type inside that. But now in JavaScript, we can use it with different data types in the same array. So here is an example, a simple example, a very basic one that we can have an array of colors in which we can define some colors inside it. And then we can modify and print the value as well. So let's go on to our VS code and write this down. Now let's see where is actually array used in our websites or in our web applications. So let's say you need to uh, set the theme for your back, uh, like website, the background theme, or you can say the colors which you need to select for some elements. So what you can do is you can put all these things inside the array part. So let's say I have an array for states. So let's check this out. I'm having different states inside this array. So there are two methods by which you can uh, define array. The one is called array literal method. So I'll just write it here for your reference. So one method is called array literal where you simply define the name of array and then you write these square brackets and inside it you directly give the values. So if I give the states as 
let's say i'll give it the state like punjab uh, then then we have let's say mp for madhya pradesh or something and then we can have let's say bihar uh, like this so this is how i'll be providing the states inside the array now it's really simple to print this out as well if i print it out here so let's see now you can see that array is getting printed with all the values inside it so now if i just check something here that is really uh, nice of this javascript so i'll simply check the type of the states now as you can see when i press enter i get object so it's amazing to see that arrays in javascript is actually an object nothing else but an object now you can connect these two things why we can just use a uh, brackets here square brackets for accessing the key values because ultimately uh, this array is also a object inside this javascript now let's check if i want to fetch some particular element from this array so actually all the elements are being given some index so this first element is given the zeroth index then uh, this delhi is given the first index mp is given the like second index index 2 so actually the index starts from 0 and if i want to access any states here i just need to write the index in the square brackets so if i write 2 it will give me the mp as an answer and if i write 1 here it will give me del now let's check out the second method to define array so there is one more method called uh, array function or you, or you can say array constructor so i'll simply just write here const and let's try to create an array for colors this time so let's say i'm creating an array for colors so that a user can uh, just say set a theme or a background for the website or anything like that so i'll just provide here so instead of using this array literal i'll now be using a array function so if i use this array function and i provide the values inside it let's say the colors are red that old colors only then uh, blue and then we have a uh, yellow and that's it now you can see that i have created this array and if i try to print this out let's just see what happens here so yes this array has been declared has been defined and also it is telling me that zeroth index is having red as a Now, color there is also something written as length so it also defines the length of the array so if you simply need to find the length of any array which is really very useful in javascript we need some property for this object so basically i have told you that this array is nothing but an object there are multiple properties provided here so you can see that we have filter we have find index join keys shift unshift so there are ample number of functions available in this array method we will be doing this in the coming videos in this uh, series so i'll just show you one method that is called length so if i try to print length you can see that the length is printing as 3 now one more thing about arrays i want to tell you here that you can dynamically just give a new value inside it and you can push a new value or the value can either be a string or it can be a number it can be a boolean value as well or in fact it can be a function as well so we'll not get into the functions part we'll just try to add some basic primitive data type so let's say i want to add colors to it so i'll simply write colors and then i'll provide the index so i have only uh, like the elements up to index 2 so i'll be providing here let's say colors at 3 and i'll provide some color let's say i'll provide black and now if i try to print this colors array you can see that black color has been added and it is also possible to change the value again to some different data type let's say i just write here some number let's say 100 so you can see that unlike any other languages which you use in javascript it provides you the freedom to write any kind of variable or any kind of value inside this array now let's move on to the next 
reference data type that is called functions. So basically functions are the backbone of JavaScript and a real world application is nothing but a hundred and thousands of function inside it that we actually execute. Now the function is a set of statements or a block that actually performs a task or it can calculate a value as well, returns it or it can simply just uh, print something or return something. So a function is a whole and sole property of this JavaScript. Here you can see an example that is written called square. So we have created a function square which is actually returning a square of a number. So let's dive into VS Code and see how we can write a function in JavaScript. So to create a simple function inside JavaScript, you just need to write function keyword. And let's just write a very basic function here which will actually print hello. So I'll simply write say hello function and inside it let's try to print something a very basic one that is hello. So now nothing happens in the console. So what we need to do here, we need to call this function and that's it. Now you can see hello on the console. So let's do a bit of uh, some important or meaningful task with this function. Actually functions are designed to take some arguments inside it so that we can call it several times and we can reuse this uh, every time we require in our program. So I'll simply just pass something here. Let's say I want to print hello uh, then I want to print my name. So to print my name what I I'll do is I'll pass some argument here and then we'll pass some value from here let's say my name that is Neha and I want to print this variable here in the console statement. Now you can see that it is printing hello Neha. So what is happening actually so whenever you are passing any value while calling the function these are actually called arguments and it is getting passed to uh, this variable that is called parameter. So if you hover over it you can see that it is written already so you don't need to apply brains and anything so everything is written out here in VS code. Now this was a very basic function which is actually just taking an argument and printing it. Let's do a bit complex thing with this function where it will be calculating something and returning us some value out of it. So I'll simply just write here function keyword and then let's say I'll write time in seconds. So actually I want to create a function which will calculate the time in seconds. So what I'll do here is I'll just pass an argument here let's say time and inside it I want to just return something that is time into 60. Let's say the time is getting passed in like let's say minutes basis so I want to convert those minutes in seconds so I'll just return this uh, multiplied by 60 and now I'll try to just uh, call this function. So I'll call this function with some value inside it. Let's say the value is I'm giving 10 minutes here. Now you can see nothing is getting printed out because it is simply returning a value but we have not stored it anywhere or we have not printed it out. So what I can do is I can just embed this uh, function call inside console.log function. So now you can see that it is printing 600 seconds. So that means I can call this function again. So let's see just copy paste this one and now I want to pass here let's say 30 minutes. So it will be 1800 seconds. So you can simply analyze that we do not have to write the code again and again to convert it into seconds. We just need to call the same function, the same method number of times you want it to get executed. So that's it for this video guys. If you like the content on this channel, please give us a thumbs up and do share it with your friends so that it could reach out to more and more people out there. So take care and we'll see you in the next video.